Hi, this is Brad Sweden from Case IH, and today we're going to discuss our different seed tube options as well as our assembly and maintenance point on our speed tube. So first, I want to talk about our standard seed tube. This is what you're going to use um, if you're just planting soybeans at regular speeds, if you're planting milo, any of the available crops that the 2000 series will plant, this is our standard tube and it's just got a Dickie John optical sensor on there. Maintenance is pretty simple. You just want to make sure you keep that clean. You know, when you're washing and storing these things, make sure that you try not to get it wet if you can. And this is our peanut tube or edible bean tube, if you will. And it kind of, what it does is uh, it sits down where the sides, you can see it on the shoe as opposed to the narrower standard tube works really, really well. It's a really good option. And your maintenance on that's gonna be virtually the same as this. Try not to get it wet. Um, make sure you keep the sensor clean and dry. And then lastly, and what we're all here to talk about really is our speed tube, speed belt, advanced seed delivery, whichever you want to call it. And uh, I guess the first thing to talk about are the parameters of it. <clears throat> Firstly, we're uh, certified we can plant with the 2000 series soybeans, high speed, corn, or cotton. And all those, the speed limit are 10 miles per hour, or up to 10 miles per hour. One thing to keep in mind, guys, <clears throat> you can go 10 miles an hour in optimal conditions. And I've run into this quite a few times. Um, we'll get in some conditions, some soil types, you know, tough, be it gumbo, uh, really cloddy, and sometimes, I mean, even though we've paid the money and, you know, we've got this wonderful tool that's here, we have to slow down. So just keep in mind that your speed is always set by your seed bed, okay? So getting straight into kind of the nuts and bolts of this thing, um, I guess we'll start here at the top. If you look here, these are your feeder wheels. And these are the corn soybean feeder wheels. Now, if you go to plant high-speed cotton, we have a different feeder wheel, you're gonna swap that out. I don't have one here, but it is in parts and you can find it. Now, basically what I've shown here, I've got a very well used feeder wheel. And most of the time what you'll see is the wear will be on the smaller one, not so much as the bigger one. And guys will ask, well, hey, when is this thing wore out? When should I look at replacing this? And honestly, if you start having feedback issues in the cab, you're starting to see you're having problems, uh, good idea to check it. But um, you know, after every crop, or say if you're a big grower and you're planting a lot of corn, high speed, um, I'd say every 1,500 acres, something like that, be a good idea to just stop and take a look at that, uh, at your feeder wheel, because you may need to replace it. Moving on here, I'm gonna show you how to take this thing apart. I have seen this some guys not quite know exactly how this thing comes apart, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna break the plastic. So you take off the little rubber boot that is there. You see here I unscrewed the outside covering of the optical sensor that's there, that's one side to it. There is a little button that is down here that you need to depress. And once you depress it, it'll come straight apart. Now getting in here, you can see there's kind of some green stuff that's on here that would be seed treatment. And um, one of the things you really need to watch for if you're having problems with feedback in the cab, there's two sides to this optical sensor. You've got, you need to make sure that these are clean on both sides, in here and here. So another thing I want to point out about how this sensor is made and why we've made it this way, if you look there, there's two sides to it. As the belt's coming down this side, is going to be measuring, looking at seed placement. And as this is coming down, this side's coming up, it's passing this optical sensor, and what it's doing is it's actually looking at the belt flight integrity. Right here, this is a wear item, this is the rumble strip. I'm gonna take it out for just a second. You can see there's knobs on it, and what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that those are still there. If those things are worn off, that's important, that little piece is important because what it does is it tries to ensure that you're getting one seed per flight so you're not getting doubles. 
So it's very good, a very good practice to keep an eye on that. And also, that's one of those deals, when you're checking out your feeder wheels, just take a look at your rumble strip. Now, it's talking about our sensor and um, belt. I had optical sensors so good, I've got an old wore out belt here. I say wore out. It's actually missing, let me see if I can find it. It's missing a slat and one's tore right here. You're gonna get that feedback independent parole back in the cab and you're gonna see that. Well, whenever you do, what you need to do is you need to take this cover off, okay? Get a Phillips screwdriver. There's a little spring down here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna back that thing off. Slide the tube forward. Kind of take the tension off of this. Now whenever you do, you take it off, it'll pop right out, okay? So, you get your new one. Let's just pretend this is new. You're gonna put it back in. And I know this is hard to see. Um, but if you look here on this belt, when you get it in your hand, there is a beveled edge that is on that belt, on the flighting of the belt, if you will. And it needs to be on the downstroke side. In here, and I know this is gonna be kind of an eye chart hard to see, there's actually directions that are in here that tell you the direction that that bevel needs to go. So when I say it needs to go on the downstroke, I'll show you when I replace my tube, or my belt, I'm sorry. So I put the belt back in. I'm gonna kind of worm it back around here. Now I'm going to take my Phillips screwdriver. I'm going to let it tension itself. I'm going to snug it up. I've got my bevel facing the correct direction. Downstroke. I kind of work mine back and forth so the belt will find its center. It's a good practice to do. Now, talking about other wear items that are here. Where the feeder wheel is at, you've got a comb and it's three metal pieces. What that does is it wipes kind of in between the feeder wheel. It is a wear item. If you see any sort of damage to that, any of the points are broken, you need to look at replacing that. Okay, down here at the bottom of the speed tube housing, you'll see a metal tab and that's really just there for wear. You know, if you see any damage to the outside of this, or it's starting to wear into the plastic and get into that metal, be a good idea at looking at replacing your housing. Um, you know, after so many acres, we run into that, or we can run into that. Last thing here, if we're doing high speed beans, this little doodad right here, this is a soybean deflector, and this is used with the 80 cell soybean disc, not the 56. If you're using the 56 cell, you won't use this. Basically what you want to do here, there's a little slot that's right here. You're just going to take this thing and pop it in there. Once it gets good and snug in there, make sure it's not broken. Make sure that it all looks legit and you're good to go. Now as far as putting this thing, we're good to go. We got our belt right. We've got made sure our feeder wheels are good. Our rumble strip's good. Our sensor is good. Now what we need to do is you hook this in down at the bottom first. You'll hear it pop. It'll pop. Push that down. Hand tighten, don't over tighten. Just get it snug on the outside of the sensor. Your speed tube's ready to go. Guys, that's about it. If you have any other further questions, please contact your nearest Case IH dealer or, you know, go back to your ops manual and check it out. Thank you.